Welcome back to my series, Dance Moms Unedited. This is the series where I discuss production notes written by the producers of Dance Moms. They show us what happened behind the scenes of each episode. Today we're looking at Season 5, Episode 11. As always, there will be a link in the description box below which will take you to a PDF of these notes so you can read through them in further detail, because there was more to this episode than the producers cared to show. The week begins with the girls and mums greeting Abby at the front desk. In the den, Jojo says that Kathy was even crazier than she expected. They all agree that Erin Babs is an extremely talented choreographer, but that the Candy Apples kids can't execute her concepts properly. Holly receives a phone call from Jeanette, telling her that she's looking forward to seeing them this weekend. She brags that Ava has recorded a song which is dedicated to her grandfather. She makes it a point to inform her that Ava didn't need any auto-tune. Holly, in turn, tells Jeanette about Nia's music. When Holly hangs up, the girls sarcastically cheer for Ava. Kalani says, oh, congrats, yay. Abby is apparently sick with a cold this week and is a bit more calm in the way that she calls the girls into the studio. Abby congratulates the girls for beating the candy apples, even complimenting Nia for her intensity in the group. She praises Bryn, but says that her passion isn't at the same level as her talent. Kira and Jess speak up, claiming that Bryn is a brat. Abby dismisses them, promising that they'll be seeing Bryn and Ashley again. Jill decides to speak up, asking Abby if they can do more dance styles, as opposed to doing lyrical groups every week. The other mums agree with her, but Abby seems offended at the idea. Abby then makes the girls read off their lists of the pros and cons of keeping Jojo on the team. Jojo is told that she is too loud, that she picks up choreography too slowly, and that she steals focus. The girls do assure her though that her stage presence, resilience, and kindness outweigh her flaws. Jojo then receives her jacket and a hug from Abby. Abby reveals that the group dance is about the 1920s, saying that at this time, ladies were ladies until they got on the dance floor. She gives Nia a solo, telling her that if she doesn't place again, she won't have any future opportunities. Abby explains that her routine, the colour purple, is inspired by a Misty Copeland routine and incorporates the sound of Nia's footsteps and grunts in the routine. Kendall Solo, waiting on a train to Paris, has Kendall portraying French singer Edith Piaf. Jill seems disappointed that Kendall will be using a prop. Abby tells Maddie that for her solo, the mannequin, the first eight counts of the routine will simply be her eyes moving. Looking at the final solos for this episode, it seems like they scrapped this idea, as well as the idea that Nia's solo would incorporate noises. During group rehearsals, Abby whispers to Gianna that they need to incorporate more lyrical steps into the choreography. With the mums watching her closely, she tries to disguise her signature steps. She compares what she's doing to what Kalani did last week by sneaking off to choreograph a solo for another kid. Upstairs, Melissa realizes that Jeanette's auto-tune comment over the phone was a dig at Mackenzie. Kira congratulates Jess on Jojo joining the team. She seems much happier to have her here than Bryn, who she thinks is overly praised by Abby. They say that even Kalani would have been called out by Abby if her turns were messed up like Bryn's were, and yet Abby still said nothing. Kira accuses Bryn of being lazy, saying that she pretended to hurt her Achilles so that she wouldn't have to give 100% effort in her dance. She claims that Bryn bosses Ashley around like she's her servant. Jess says that Bryn told Jojo that she wanted to go home, and that Ashley wanted to bring her own choreography to the competition. The mums decide to call Ashley to confront her about these accusations. Ashley tells them that no one can expect perfection from Bryn, since she is brand new to all of this. After hanging up, the mums think that the pair were just there to try and ride on the ALDC's coattails. The mums then talk about Jeanette again, saying that they feel bad for Ava to have her as a mother. Kira makes a snide comment, saying that Ava must be starving. Is that another body shaming comment? Why can't these mums leave Ava alone? Jojo comes upstairs and tells the mums that Abby and Gia are trying to make the group more lyrical. Jill sends Jojo back down into the studio, asking her to be their little spy. As Abby moves on to solos, Jill and Melissa leave the room to organise Kendall's props. Holly thanks Kira and Jess for being more supportive than Jill and Melissa. This is when the trio make a pact to stand up for one another's children. Rehearsing Nia's solo, Abby tells her not to be a stereotypical African-American, saying that she needs to have good feet and clean lines. I can't fathom how Abby keeps trying to champion herself as a supporter of the black community. Sure, she created dancers like The Color Purple, Rosa Parks, and Maya Angelou, but then she turns around and makes totally racist comments like that. 
As she moves Kendall's prop, Jill reminds Abby not to make Kendall solo lyrical, and Abby loses it. She tells Jill that she needs to stop telling her what to do and to fix Kendall's technique instead. She claims that Kendall's technique is the worst that it's been in weeks. Abby then leaves the room, leaving behind a stunned Jill and a completely silent Melissa. The following day, Abby is in the den, where a spread of hot dogs and fixins has been set up. Jill and Holly hang back at the front desk, asking Gianna if the group dance is lyrical. Gianna assures them that it isn't. Entering the den, Holly asks Abby why they are celebrating with hot dogs, and Abby says that she can't take the credit for doing something to make everyone happy. I'm 99% sure that it was the producers who brought this food in and were trying to make it look like it was Abby's idea. They've definitely done a lot of similar things in the past. Melissa hints to Mackenzie that she should confess to Abby that she hurt her foot during yesterday's rehearsal. Before she has the chance to tell her, Abby informs them that the routine has already been choreographed with Mackenzie in the middle. She becomes very angry that Mackenzie didn't tell her as soon as she hurt her foot. Melissa informs her that the doctor recommended taking two to three days off of dancing. At first, Mackenzie is sitting next to Abby during group rehearsals, but Abby doesn't want to risk losing and tells Mackenzie that she has to dance. Melissa claims that she is going down into the studio to make sure that Mackenzie isn't dancing. She doesn't stand up to Abby though, instead telling Mackenzie to mark the routine so that she can dance on Sunday. The mums notice that the choreography this week looks very familiar, and they decide to look up some of their past group dances. When they watch the season 4 group Yum Yum, they realise that it has many of the same exact steps as this week's routine. Melissa says that this week's dance is really pushing the girls, but Jill points out that they're just doing things that they've already done. She thinks that it would be a good idea to bring in a new choreographer to work with the girls. Kira suggests that they might be able to find someone out in LA to help them. Wrapping up the group, Abby warns the girls not to fraternise with Jeanette or Ava at the competition. In the viewing room, Jess wonders if Ava's solo this weekend will be lyrical. All the mums seem to think that it will be. Jill adds that Ava's routine will be uncomfortable to watch. Jill tells the mums that Abby has posted a release date for Kendall's new single, which will be coming out in 2015. Maddie enters the studio for her solo rehearsal, bringing in another hot dog for Abby. Abby struggles to determine what emotion she wants Maddie to portray and tells her to just be more convincing. The mums wonder if Maddie's flesh-coloured leotard is supposed to make her solo a spin-off of her seer work, but Melissa is adamant that it's not. Nia enters the viewing room, nervous about Abby's insistence that she places this week. Jess tells her just to live it and not to dance out of fear. Melissa and Jill once again leave to manage Kendall's props, and Holly talks to Jess and Kira about the new team dynamic. Holly is hurt by Jill and Melissa's actions surrounding the Maddie B music video. When Jill and Melissa return, Holly tells them how she felt during the shoot and says that Jess became her ally. Jill tells her that Jess will come and go and that she only cared about getting her child ahead. Jill tries to remind Holly of why she didn't like Jess in the first place and says that Jess has nothing to lose. Jess retorts, saying that Kendall doesn't have much left to lose either. This causes Jill to claim that she wasn't going to quote, give it up for some punk brat boy. Downstairs, Abby gives Nia a pep talk. She tells her that she can't keep giving Nia solos, especially after Holly's behavior in LA. She rants about the recording studio situation, Nia crying, and how much that she has aggravated Abby. Nia asks Abby if she can forget about those things right now, and Abby responds saying that things aren't easily forgiven, just like murderers can't simply be forgiven. It is truly insane to see Abby's brain and logic at work. How could recording a song possibly be comparable to murder? Apparently one of the producers, Scott, had to step in and talk to Abby about this. Abby says that Nia needs to come to her as her manager, but Nia says that she wants to keep that kind of stuff separate from the dance studio. Abby tells Nia that Brooke did her music separate, hinting that it was a failure. She tells her to win this weekend and dismisses Nia. Holly goes into the hallway to find Nia emotional about her discussion with Abby. She is proud that Nia managed to handle the situation maturely. The mums feel sorry for what Nia is going through with Abby. They think that Holly and Abby need to sit down and resolve their drama. Holly tells the mums that she doesn't think that Abby is capable of having a conversation without turning it into a fight. Melissa and Jill seem upset about Holly, Jess and Kira's pact. Melissa hints that the last pact between Christy and Kelly didn't go so well. Jill doesn't think that the pact will work because everyone has different standards for what kind of behaviour is okay. Abby asks Nick, who is the girl's tutor, to carry Maddie onto the stage at the competition, 
since she is portraying a mannequin. She goes to the front desk to find flowers and a thank you balloon waiting for her. She also receives a call from her real estate agent, saying that her lease is almost signed. Abby talks to the mums, reminding them that there is no bus taking them to the competition this weekend, since they are competing in Pennsylvania. When the mums ask her who the balloons are from, she says that they're from Ashley and Bryn. The next day, the ALDC arrives at the competition to find Jeanette and Ava waiting for them. Abby ignores the pair, instead rushing over to hug Rochelle Rack, who was standing next to them. Holly decides to talk to Jeanette, and they discuss their daughter's music. Jeanette confirms that Ava will be dancing to her own song. In the green room, Kira and Jess ask Melissa if Mackenzie will be dancing, since her foot hasn't healed completely. Melissa assures them that Kenzie would let her know if she was in a lot of pain, and that she really wants to do the dance. Jess asks Melissa and Jill why they would refuse to join their pact. Jill questions why a smart woman like Holly would leave her friends and make a pact with the new moms. Holly explains that the pact is supposed to be a support system for issues moving forward. Jill accuses Holly of not keeping in contact with the mums while they were in LA. Holly retorts, saying that supporting her only behind the scenes isn't enough. Jill is offended that Holly is only willing to remember all the times that she didn't support her, and none of the times that she did. Holly says that she has real-world problems to deal with at the moment, namely Nia's grandfather's deteriorating health. Melissa, Jill and Gianna run into Jeanette backstage. Melissa asks Jeanette if her auto-tune comment was a dig at Mackenzie. Jeanette denies it, just saying that she's proud of Ava's ability to sing without it, and Melissa seems to buy her excuse. Jeanette enters the ALDC dressing room, and Abby claims that she should be thanking her for all that she has done for Ava. Jeanette accuses Abby of harassing Ava backstage at their last competition. The mums yell at her, and Jeanette's voice begins to quiver. Jess decides to show off Jojo's jacket, knowing that Abby ripped Ava's jacket off of her last season. When Jeanette leaves, the girls reveal their costumes. Abby gloats that Maddie's solo is new and cutting edge, but when she asks Maddie to explain her number, Maddie reveals that Abby was inspired by a Broadway show and that the concept isn't necessarily new. Abby reminds the girls that the judges will be critiquing them on stage after their performances. Nia is the first to perform her solo, followed by Maddie, Kendall and Ava. Abby leaves the auditorium before Ava performs, but the ALDC girls stay and congratulate her backstage. Nia and Ava share a moment together, having both performed their solos in honour of their grandfathers. Back in the dressing room, the ALDC mums bash Ava's song and performance. They think it sounds like Ava's song used a bit of auto-tune. Jess brings up that one of the judges said that Maddie had bent knees. Melissa acts as though she doesn't remember the criticism. Kenzie tells everyone that even though her foot hurts, she is able and ready to perform. Nia steps outside to hear from her dad about her grandfather's condition. While she's gone, Holly informs Abby that he likely only has a few days left, and he only seems to respond to Nia's voice now. Abby starts to complain about the group routine not being lyrical, and also about Jeanette's presence at the competition. Jill tattles to Abby about the mum's pact. Jess defends it, saying that it is an agreement to have one another's backs when there are inequities or their kids are mistreated. No one tells Abby that the mistreatment they're referring to is actually Abby's behaviour. Abby suspects that Holly is the leader of this pact, and tells her that she is both uneducated and sneaky. Out of all the insults Abby could have chosen, those are two things that Holly certainly is not. She has a doctorate, and has always told people what she and Nia have been up to. Holly brings up Abby's earlier comment that compared Nia to a murderer. She says that it's a completely inappropriate analogy, especially for an innocent black child. Jess, Kira and Jill all timidly support Holly in this, but Melissa tries to defend Abby. Holly shuts Melissa down. Abby then taunts Holly, hoping that she will leave, but Holly says that they aren't going anywhere. Abby says it's because this is all that Nia has. Holly exits the room to regain her composure, closely followed by Melissa and Jill. Abby tells Kira and Jess that Holly is a lying, manipulative, and disrespectful person. It seems to me that she's projecting onto Holly. I honestly couldn't think of three better words to describe Abby herself. When the girls run their group number, Abby refuses to look up from her phone. Apparently one of the microphones picks up Abby muttering, the sooner Nia realizes she's black, the better. The girls perform Decadent Darlings, and Maddie compliments Kenzie on her performance. She's very proud of her for dancing well through her injury. During awards, Abby is holding the baby of one of the judges. This seems to upset Jeanette. Ava is mistakenly announced as an ALDC dancer, 
much to Abby and Jeanette's frustration. Maddie wins first place overall, Nia wins first in her division but does not place overall, and Kendall does not place overall either. Ava wins first place in her division, beating Kendall, but also doesn't place overall. Jill is upset that Ava beat Kendall, saying that it must have been because Kendall was entered into the lyrical category for a dance that was not lyrical. Kira tells Jill that Ava can only do lyrical, saying that her hip-hop is atrocious. Jeanette enters the dressing room, accusing Abby of schmoozing with the judges. Abby and the mums laugh in her face until she leaves. Abby wonders if Jeanette entered Ava under the ALDC name on purpose, and if she did it at other competitions too. Kira suggests that maybe Ava was only scored so high because she was listed as an ALDC dancer. Abby blames Jill and Holly for not letting her do a lyrical routine, which she says would have had a better chance at winning. After Abby leaves, Melissa says that they need to win at competitions, especially against their rivals, and that she thinks that they should stick to lyrical. Holly disagrees, pointing out that they won with numbers like Stomp the Yard earlier in the season. Before they leave, Jess suggests that next time, the mum should brainstorm their own group number concepts and try to pitch it to Abby. And with that, we've reached the end of episode 11. What do you think of the Alliance and Abby's revolting behaviour this week? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.